Hey folks, Dave here. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. You know it's like I always say, today is Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. We only get one, so make it an amazing day. We have a very special show for you today. Over the last several years, we've talked to you about the Mule Saddle Training Course. Absolutely free, incredible information. So many of you have gone through the, this course, but so many of you haven't. So today, we're taking you all the way through the course for today's program. We're gonna go through just about every video from the Mule Saddle Training Course as an exclusive live stream Ask Steve event. So go ahead, sit back, enjoy all of the different parts of how to mule, how to saddle your mule or your donkey, and then if you got questions, put them in the comment sections. As always, so grateful that you're choosing to spend a little bit of time with us today. Your time's valuable, and the fact that you dedicate a little bit of it to learn about mules and donkeys with us, we sure do appreciate it. All right, here you go. Steve Edwards telling you all you need to know about saddles for mules and donkeys. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so folks, I have spent over 40-some years trying to figure out how to have my mule comfortable. I've cowboyed, I've gone through all kinds of country, I've ridden horses, I've ridden mules. And yet the biggest thing that I have problems with and had problems with was trying to keep my animals sound. So I tried this saddle, I tried this, that saddle. I took and I took my own saddles apart and I changed things. I went to saddle makers and I say, build the saddle like this. And then when I finally started packing freight, and using my particular pack saddle, which the arches on it moved and the bars floated, I started seeing what angles I needed for my saddles, for my pack saddles. Well, then I took those angles and the way that tree was made and I introduced it into my saddle that I have for these mules. Now, Mr. Horse is way built different than Mr. Mule. He, he's got his weight up high, and if we look at these mules, we can see how their weight is down low. All these things make a mega difference. And that's why I've introduced this course, so that you can see why. I'm showing you step by step. I'm showing you horse trees. I'm showing you my tree. Notice I didn't say it's a mule tree. It is my tree. There's a lot of people that claim that they have mule saddles. Well, my saddle is what I designed after 40-some years of of working cowboys, working cattle, packing freight. Uh, I've been all over the world and I've taken these same saddles and put on mules in Brazil, put on mules in Israel, put on mules in Egypt, put on mules in all over the United States, Canada and Mexico. These saddles fit these mules. They're not just a saddle that some company come to me and said, hey, here's the saddle, it'll work on your mule, no. I spent 40 some years trying to figure out how to keep my mules comfortable so that I could use them every day. And that's what's important. It's one thing having a mule standing, fitting a saddle on them. It's another thing being a working cowboy so that you can see how the saddle goes. That's one thing like right here on Andrea Ranch. The guy that manages this ranch is a working cowboy. He knows how these animals go. He works on these animals. He works with them. They're a tool. And without, them, without their animals being solid in their back, he wouldn't be able to get the job done. Same thing with me cowboying. When I'm using my animals every day, I cannot afford to have their back saddle sore. So that's why we developed this course. There's gonna be lots of questions and answers. Call me if you wanna call me, but look at all the articles that I have on my website. We're just trying to help you out. Thank you very much for going through this course. So now, how mules are shaped. Now, let's look at the back of this mule here. Get over, mule. Get over. Get over. Get over. Get whoop, right there. Whoop. All right, now look, from back here, I want you to look and how you can see the mule's belly comes out both sides of the hip, on the right and on the left. You see that? So they're wider in the, in the belly area. Now look here. Now notice how it comes from wider down to narrower. So they are V-shaped in their shoulders. So when you look from the front here,
if you look at the shoulders, you can see how they are V-shaped. So this shoulder comes out, this shoulder comes out, and where the horses, they're, they're narrow, they're A-shaped. So that right there is the confirmation of the mule. Now, we have the, we look at the mule, what do we see? Donkey. Donkey head, donkey shoulders. This one happens to have a nice round hump, a rump, which a lot of donkeys have. But notice we also have donkey feet. This size of a mule would normally carry about a number, uh, 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 about a number two plate. He doesn't because he's got the donkey feet. So when we're fitting a saddle, we fit to bone structure, not muscle mass. This muscle mass will change just in one ride. They can, they can change 100 pounds. In a couple of days, they can be 200 pounds even. They can be dropping. So if we set a, set a, set a saddle, like a lot of saddle makers do, and they fit a saddle in, let's just say January, when he's fat and been sitting around, and then we fit him again in July after he's been standing, I mean, after he's been used, he's going to be toughened up. So then what's going to happen to all the muscle? It's going to toughen up. It's going to be smaller. Now, we just measured a mule for January, but now he's got the physique of a, of a one in shape and condition. So that's the basic makeup. Now notice the scapula right here. Notice the scapula. Now when I move the mule back, notice the scapula go down and then up. Down, now watch it come up. Up, down, you see that? So the scapula goes up, down, up, down. Now watch this area back here, watch it move. So as I move the mule, see it move? Move, that moves, you see it move? So if you tighten, if you put your, your saddle and you make it tight in this area, that's why you see all the dryness, that's why you see all the white hairs because of you've restricted this working area right here. That's why I like to have my front cinch be the loosest, the back cinch be the tightest. Now, that's, so that's the basic makeup, and it makes no difference if we have a draft animal like this, or let's go over here and look at this nice uh, uh, saddle animal. Same thing here, we look at this little guy here, Welsh pony mule. Notice how his belly comes out on both sides of his hips. He's hourglass belly toward the shoulder, even a mini mule like that, so from a draft, to a mini than a nice saddle mule like this little bay. We do the same thing. He's got a nice wither and he's got a nice back. Notice how you can kind of more of a prominent backbone, but feel right here. You see a bump, a bump, and a bump. Those three bumps right there with a saddle that is cinched across the top tight, that can develop what's called a fistula and these places can get real sore. That's one of the reasons I designed this saddle here if you notice my saddles are open in the back and they stand up in the back. They do that so they don't put pressure on those three bones. Now notice on this, on this little, on this uh, draft mule, the bumps are still there, but they're not as prevalent. But if you run your hands right there, you can feel them. And where is that? Right in your seat area. So you can run your hand right there and you can feel those three bumps. It's a little bit more prevalent on, on this saddle meal here. Now again, we look from behind and we see the belly out on both sides. Notice his hip is a little bit more peaky, more of a quarter horse slope to it and this sort of thing. He's got a nice big Gascon muscle right here, which is your powerhouse. But this, this mule has got a really nice back. Now notice, where are the white hairs? Down here on the cinch area. All white hairs are, are scald. It's where we've overheated them, where it happened to be a sultry day, and this was the place that it rubbed the most. And if we feel right here, we can almost feel kind of a high spot, right even with the fat pocket here. Anytime you have a high spot, it's on the body, you can have a white hair pretty easy. Now notice this mule has no white spots at all here, none. And, and Randy's been riding uh, his saddles that he makes 
on this mule a lot and notice no white spots. That's nice. It's then we come on over here, the same thing. No white spots. So it just he didn't have a sultry day. We don't see, but where do see the white spots? Down here on the fat pockets. The fat pockets aren't so prevalent here, but they are right here. White spots are just overheating, folks. And the more the more we use the mule and we don't change it, the, the more the white spot's going to stay. So basically here, if I would have loosened my front cinch up looser, my back cinch would have been tighter. I may not have had so much of a white spot, okay? Now we go over to, from this mule, which is about, uh, it's a nice size. He's about, just about about 16 hands. And we come over to this older mule here. And again, we look at the same thing. We look from behind. We can see his belly's out on both sides. You can see his hip is more rounded, where the other bay horse was kind of, bay mule was a little bit more peaky. This mule is fairly straight. But again, where do we see some of the white spots? Right there. That's not a saddle, that's a breechy. It scalded that day. It happened. Okay, now what would we do? When we start to see a scald, we would change how we adjusted our hip plate, because this would be the hip plate. We'd move it back a little bit so that we wouldn't continue to have this. Now he could have got that packing, packing freight, and nobody saw it. Now notice there's no white spots here, but notice the fat pocket. But look on this side. When our riders, or when our weight is not corrected, notice we have the white spots here. So our rider, or our pack outfit, is actually setting more to the right. That's another reason we get the white spots. My rider, or my pack outfit, is not lined up centered. A lot of our riders, because of our hips, or because they don't know how to ride and ride centered, they end up being right or left, and that's where you usually see your drier spots. Uh, on the back. So that pretty much takes care of the general confirmation. And you've got four different mules here, different heights, uh, but they all basically have the donkey uh, bone structure and the, and the donkey shape of them. They carry their weight down low. That's they carry their weight down low where horses carry their weight up high. Talk about that and the importance of it. Okay, so if we look, we don't have a horse here right now, but you can see how the belly comes down here and comes down and then back up again. So his belly is down low. Where you'll see horses, the belly will be up higher, be tighter. So they carry their weight down low. And because of that, that again, that's the saddle wants to go forward. Okay, so we have a rawhide covered tree. This is rawhide, all nailed in, beautiful. Very few guys these days know how to rawhide cover a tree. This is how they used to do it. This is traditional. So a lot of traditionalists like and prefer rawhide. I have started using fiberglass on my wood trees. And then I do that. And then on top of that, I spray uh, the, the same like rhino covering. I spray on top of the tree so I completely get it sealed. If there's any places that moisture will get into this wood, you'll start twisting and turning it. Only downside about wood. So this is my, my tree that I've designed. I tell people all the time, this is not a mule tree. This is my tree, a Steve Edwards tree. Now, watch this. When I take this draft mule and I set the horse tree on, one of the first things I notice is I'm setting right down flush upon his kidneys right there. First thing I notice. Second thing I notice is that my, my, tr my tree here, when I am inch and a half away from the scapula, notice when it goes forward, it goes directly into the scapula. Boom, pretty tough. I like the way it fits in here. Pretty nice fit in this area here, it's nice. But i am already got pressure up on the kidneys and I'm not even setting on it. Notice that when I push on it, I'm going right into the muscles of the kidneys. And notice when I go to put the saddle goes to go forward directly into the scapula. Now this is a semi-quarter horse tree right here. Now I take my tree. Again, this is my tree. This is not a mule tree. 
They're all designed for the mule only, but just because somebody calls it mule doesn't mean it fits. This tree is what I learned, what I designed from the mule. This, you cannot buy this tree. I do not sell these trees. Nobody else has my tree. So now I put it up on the mule's back. One of the first things you notice, you see how it comes up off the scapula. So as it goes forward, it doesn't dig into the scapula that the horse tree does. Notice the second part here. There's my saddle. Notice back here, I am not setting into the kidneys. I got a lot of movement up underneath the backbone, but I'm not setting on the kidneys right off the bat. So there's the two major things. Where do I want the saddle to fit? I want it to fit right here where I'm sitting. Because if I got pressure on the kidneys, I got pressure on the scapula, I'm hurting my mule. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, they're so, they're, uh, they're so uh, tuned in to the pain and the pressure, some will go to buck, but others are stoic. They'll brace into it. You're thinking, I'm riding my saddle. It's doing fine. The mule isn't complaining. He's not complaining today. But like a lady told me, she'd been riding the same saddle for five years, and then one day, boom, she had a problem. It wasn't that the saddle was creating any problems. Yes, it was. But the mule was putting up with it, putting up with it, and finally his back said, I've had enough. So there's the, there's the difference, you guys. There's that saddle. Now, let's take and go over here to this mule. Again, you see how their scapulas are so much more higher? That scapula is so much more higher. You have to be aware of that because that's where your saddle, you don't want it banging there and you don't want it sitting on the kidney area. Now, if you look, you can see this area right in here. This is where the kidneys hang. That's the muscle area. So now when we put the semi quarter horse, which is the majority of saddles that you see out there built, and we see that on the mule, this one here is a little bit better in that it's not sitting completely on top of the, of the back. That's a lot nicer back there, but it's still fairly close. But now here's the main thing. Here's the difference between my saddles and your horse saddles. Notice how that saddle goes directly into the scapula, directly into it. And that's what we don't want. Even if we put the, the, the saddle pad and the other stuff in here, as this saddle starts to go forward, it's still gonna hit this thing. So. We put my tree up, and one of the first things we notice is how it's up off of the scapula. He's got kind of a high scapula. Now, I've still got a chance of hitting him, but notice how it still goes up over top. And then once I put all my rigging and stuff on, my saddle is still way away from the skirting. Now, look here in the back. Notice no pressure on the kidneys. Even if I push down on it, the bars don't lay down on the kidneys. Okay, so that's a little bit more narrower of a mule. Now we take one that goes between the two. Not quite so narrow and not quite so wide. And we take the horse saddle and we put on there. And we see how it's up off the back. That's kind of nice, that's really nice. But now here's, where the, here's the dividing part, right here. This doesn't have quite the pronounced the scapula, but it's still there. Notice how it goes into the scapula. This mule doesn't have as pronounced as the big bay we had, but the scapula is still there. And notice it's going into it. Now, we change and we go to my tree. The first thing we notice, it's up off the scapula right there. When it goes forward, it doesn't put pressure up on the scapula. I have to tip my saddle down like this in order to get it to go. So when you set in it, notice the next thing here. There's no pressure back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no pressure back here on the kidneys. There's no pressure back here on those three bones I was telling you about. Remember those three bones? Those three bones, there's no pressure there as well. So that is three different animals, a draft, one that's in between this one here and then your narrower saddle animal. That's the three of them. Now we look at this horse's belly. Do you see it's almost kind of fairly flat? It doesn't come down into the big swoop. Let's go over here and look at the bay. So you can get an idea what that looks like. 
And I see over here how mules carry their weight down lower. And look at how she almost, he almost looks pregnant in comparison. So mules carry their weight down low, horses carry their weight up high. You can see the difference between that horse and this mule, and it'll give you a really good idea. Now, notice also that white hairs are extremely prevalent on our horses. These are from constant pressure because here's what happens. When we don't tighten our, front, our back cinch up and we only tighten our front cinch up, look how the back of the saddle is sticking up. And notice that as the saddle is not tightened, it goes back and forth. And notice this white hair right here. Notice this tree right there going right in. Where do you think you got the white hairs? If we tighten that back cinch, look at how it comes up off of this horse's back. This is a horse tree. If we take and tighten up the back cinch, it comes up off this horse's back. We can still see where this is tapping, but with the cinch back, it takes the pressure. But what happens is we only have one rear cinch. The back of the saddle comes up. We're sitting in it. It cantilevers and it creates that problem right there. Okay, so folks want to know what size saddle to put on my mule. Here's this mule, about 13.2, right around 13.2. And we just had it on this mule, which is 16.2. So we'll take it from this mule, 13.2, and we'll put the saddle up here. Now notice right off the bat, no pressure on the scapula, or none, right there. Notice back here in the back, it's not laying down on top of the kidneys. This mule's 13.2. <laughs> All right, so now and notice it's not touching on the wither and notice when you're looking down through the middle here There's plenty of room up underneath here on the spine Lots of room And then we take this same little mule Of the same tree and here's a here's a 16 2 so we went from 13 2 to 16 2 And here's a 16 2 notice got the same thing. We got the clearance underneath here. This is really important This is the clearance Notice it's not laying down against the kidneys. So you go from a 16-2 mule to a 13-2 mule. Right there. And then we take the horse saddle. And we put the horse saddle. Notice the white spots here. That's from the saddle being tightened down on a cinch and having a, uh, a, an incorrect tree put on their back. But if you notice now, see where this white area is. And now look. And why it's that way. See, see the horse bar? It's laying right up against the animal's back. Notice that when it goes forward, what's it do? It goes right into the scapula. Boom. And then we take that same 13 2 mule, and then we take this tree, and we put my tree on there. Oh, again. Whoa, whoa. Notice how we got the pressure up off of there. So there's your white marks right there. It's almost off it completely. So we have a 13-2 mule, 16-2 mule. And you can see the saddle works good on both mules. You can see how it fits in the back, see how it fits in the front. <coughs> As a rider, I want the only place I want this saddle to really sit on the mule's back is right where I'm sitting. Because if I put pressure here, I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, restrict the muscle area and the scapula. Notice it's an inch and a half. Here's the scapula. Here's two fingers. It's got roughly an inch and a half from the bar to here. So if I try to push this forward, look, it goes right up over top of the scapula. If I take this other one, it goes, I have to tip my saddle like this in order to get it to work. So there's your difference, a 16-2 mule, 13-2 mule. People look at sizes. They don't think about the, the length of the back. If you measure this back from the wither to here, wither to there, there's not much difference between those two. They just look at the size, the height. What do you think? Folks, I want to talk to you a little bit about having to sit in a saddle. It's really important that when you're in a saddle, your legs are slightly bent, just a little bit. If you've got your legs over bent like this, you're going to have knee problems, you're going to have back problems. Us guys, we tend to slouch in the saddle. We tend to slouch in the couch. We tend to do that. Well, when we do, we're going to develop problems. So... You want your heels down, your toes up. Notice that when my heels are down and my toes are up, I want to go back. 
If my toes are down and my heels are up, what happens? I want to go forward. So do you want to be forward on a mule when you're going down a hill? No, no, no. You want to be able to be back, getting back here like this. So always think, heels down, toes up. I just saw a picture of a guy that was supposed to be a mule trainer, and he was going into a river, and he was, his toes were down like this, and he was leaning forward. I thought, what in the world are you trying to do? You know, not only are you putting a mule off balance, but you're off of balance, okay? So that's what you want to ride. Slightly knees bent. You're riding Western style. This is not English. You throw your shoulders back, your chest out, and you ride 60% on your legs, 40% on your seat. If you sit all in your seat, you're going to have a seat problem. Your, your, your bottom is going to bother you. And the other thing, folks, is you need to condition yourself. If you're not in condition, you go out there on the side of a mountain and ride, you, you deserve to be sore. It's part of that part of life, you know. Uh, so when it comes down to this riding, you want to be able to condition yourself and you want to be able to set correctly. Nice thing I, got, I like about my stirrups, you look on my fenders here, notice how my fenders will move back and forth. So if I need to put my legs way forward going down a steep mountain, I can do it. If, I, if I'm going to be posting, I can do that. If I want to be cantering, I can do that. I can move my legs any way I want, and it's how I designed this fender in this saddle. I ride mountains, I ride trails, and I don't, when it comes down to it, I don't want to spend a lot of time having to be adjusting my saddle and stuff all the time. Now, I do have to do that, but I want to be comfortable, and I can be able to swing my legs with these. Again, that's very, very important. Now, this is a pummel, and when you take and setting in the saddle as you're setting in the saddle do not put your feet in the stirrups when you're first testing out a saddle to see if it fits you i can't tell you how many people sit i'll have 15 saddles out and they'll sit in every single saddle or i'll pick up four or five of them that fit them and let's see i like this one the best and you know what there's no difference in any of them saddles all the exact same tree all the exact same padding, it's just that they finally found their seat. Setting in a bunch of saddles is not going to do it. It's how you set yourself in a saddle. And notice, my feet are not in the stirrups. If I put my feet in the stirrups, it's going to kick my, my, my back, my leg back almost three inches. You can see I got three fingers in here. That's too much. When my legs are hanging natural like I should be setting and I'm setting correctly, notice two fingers. You would like to see one to two fingers between your thigh and the pummel. Now, I can't get away with this, ladies, no matter how I do this to you. Because a lot, I, if it's not your rump size, it is your thigh size. So, like I said, I can't get away with it. But this is what you'd like to see. I'd like to see this on an average, two fingers between my thigh and the pummel. At the closest, one finger. Then when I stick my feet in the stirrups and kick myself back, I'm going to have up to three, maybe even four fingers back. And I, I, I'm not even getting my feet in the stirrups. I just kick myself back. Look how I changed it. But when you're sitting natural and you're sitting comfortable, I'm sitting comfortable right now. Notice that when I do that, two fingers. Sitting comfortable. So that's what I like to see in a saddle. It's not your rump size. It's your thigh between your thigh and the pummel. This happens to be a 16-inch saddle. I weigh about 200 pounds. And... Um, and I'm 5'6", so I've been riding a 16-inch saddle pretty much most of my life. Hope that helps you on fitting the saddle to you, the rider. Okay, folks, we've got to remember on mules, they're V-shaped in their shoulders. Horses are A-shaped in their shoulders. Mules carry their weight down low and their hourglass belly toward the shoulder. So notice how this belly comes around and comes toward the shoulder. So the, the back cinch is going to be longer than the front cinch because of the way the belly is. So you'll take a rope and you'll throw it across and then you'll bring it up. You want it to be right where the scapula is. You want to have about a whole hand from the scapula to, the, to your rope. And that's roughly going to be about where your D-ring is going to be for your cinch. And then you take your knot and you measure it off right to here. Then once you do that, you take your measuring tape
and you put it from here and you measure the length of that and it comes across as 78 inches all right so now you take that 78 inches and you cut it in half and that becomes 39 okay so you take then you take that 39 and you take four inches off of each side okay so then that makes it 31 32 so it's gonna be a 32 inch cinch would be what I would use on the front of the mule okay you could use up to a 34 but here's the deal from where your d-ring is to where your d-ring is down here it doesn't matter how close it is here you just don't want to have it clear back underneath here and you don't want to have it up here close to where you can't cinch it back up so if your cinches are what 12 16 inches away Randy it'd be good That'd be fine if I was going to do an average, 12 to 16 inches. So we do the same thing. We'll take this tape and we'll throw along the back part. Now, a, a lot of people don't have a, a nice uh, tape that, uh, that's these cloth tapes, but they're nice if you can use them. So you bring this up and you, you're dealing with it right around, right around 90 inches. Now notice here as the belly comes up, Right where the belly flattens off and then comes back up again, that's where you want that rear cinch to be. That's the sweet spot. See, this comes around and then it flattens. This comes in, flattens out right here, then goes back up. That's the sweet spot where you want that rear cinch. So you take and you put your, your uh, measuring stick right there, and then you measure this off. It's 92 inches. So you take 92 inches, and you do half of that. That's going to be... 46 46 and then take four inches off of each side 38 so you run about 38 so that's roughly going to be this mule you could you could do you could do a 32 and a 34 on him it'd be fine or you could do a 38 and a 40 in the back and you'd be fine so that's how you can measure for a cinch i'll throw the saddle up like this so we just went from a 16 and a half draft mule down to a 13 and a half Welsh pony mule you can see where the saddle fits here's the scapula right here so it's an inch and a half behind the scapula notice how we got the skirt rounded off in the back so even on a short mule we're not touching the hip bone even on a short mule because we round off the skirting it doesn't interfere with the scapula so it's okay for the saddle pad to touch the scapula you just don't want the saddle to touch the scapula exactly the saddle pad that's okay that's not going to hurt a thing uh, but when you because when you tighten down the saddle the leather will will put pressure against the scapula and that's where you're in trouble so there I got that part done. So then I take and I pull my breeching only to right here on top of the hip. That's all. I don't want to slide it down here because if the mule should move while I'm trying to cinch him up, we can have a wreck. So I'll just put it right there. And then we'll have to change out these cinches because obviously I have 42 inch cinches on here. So it's a little bit big for him. I knew you'd come all the way from Australia to to do something here, you're pretty handy. There we go. Yep, this is a 32. That's a 36. And this is the 36. So we'll put those on. I'll trade you. Sounds good. Okay. That 32 inch cinch is probably going to be a little long too. It probably needs like a 28, but that'll get us by for now. The main thing I want you to see is how this saddle, I can take it, a 16 inch saddle from the draft animal down to the pony animal, and it'll do just fine. Talking about the difference in size of mule. I've heard you say difference is oftentimes in the height, not necessarily the length. Can you talk about that? Yeah, really, if we, and also how narrow they are in, from the back. Because we look at this mule, 
and see how narrow it is in the back. And then we look at the draft mule and how wide it is in the back. That's, that's what you've got to look at is how wide they are is one of the things. But you see with my tree, which we've seen on other videos, you can see the tree is sitting right close to the spine. That's what you want. You want to have it so that that way I can fit a wide mule, I can fit a narrow mule. Here's the problem. When people take and put a wider tree on, they get up on the sixth and seventh rib, the fat pocket right here. You see there's a fat pocket right here. You see the high spot. And what happens is when you put the wider tree on, it puts pressure right here on that sixth and seventh rib. And then you cinch it down. And that's not only where you get your white spots, but it also, I've seen it kick out ribs as well. Okay, so now once we got those done, we'll go ahead and pull the cinches up underneath. Got it there, David? Nope. Oh. So this is a 32 on the front and a 36 on the back, which is not normally what I would, would want to go for. I just want to give you an idea. We got some other cinches we're going to put on to, to show you. Thank you. Oh, we've already got those. I need like a 28. It's probably going to be on the front of my saddle, I bet. Okay, got it there? Just snug. Okay, just snug. All right, now notice here. This is a 32 on the front, a 36 on the back. Of course, I haven't adjusted up the breaching yet, but you see how they're kind of low, setting on there, which is not bad, it's usable. But now let's go to the other side. Now over here, we see that it's high on both sides. So what we can do is we can take and lower this down down to here, and then I can lower this one. Like I said, this is a 32-36, so normally I would, I would want you to do a 28 in the front and a 32 in the back. But just to give you an idea, it doesn't really matter where your cinches are here, just as long as when your mule starts losing weight going on the trail ride, that you have another hole or two to adjust it up to. That's, that's all that matters. So there, I've got it into there. So we're set. This will be all right for what we'll do here. So now we'll take this other side, and I'll go ahead and pull it up. The reason I have latigos on both sides is so that we evenly distribute the cinches. You want your cinches to be even so that it doesn't pull the saddle to the right or to the left. So now you can see where I pulled that one up at, right there. Even is the goal. Even is the goal. So now there's that one, and then I'll pull up the slack here just a little bit. So now, you can see about where they are there, so we'll make sure they're even on each side, on the right and on the left side. So we can see where that one is. You're roughly looking at about, just about two hands back there. And then we'll come over here, and we're about two hands there. And then this one, I can actually take up a little slack here and still have plenty of room. But again, I would put a 28 on the front. I'd put a 32 on the back, and you can even get away with a 36, as you can see, because of their bellies. So it really makes no difference where your cinches come up. What makes a difference is, as you're riding, you're able to adjust the D-ring on them. Talk to me about the tightness. Okay, so tightness. Notice how the mule's belly flattens out right here. All right, comes around, flattens out. So right now you can see I can just slide my hand in here pretty easy. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mule and I'm going to walk him, make a little circle here. And you can see right there I can just get my fingers in. Hey Randy, I got that really awesome Trex helmet in there. Oh yeah, it's a great one. I got it just for them boys. So now I want to move around the, the mule just a little bit, like this. 
I don't tighten my cinches all up in one spot. I tighten it up a little bit and then I move them around. Now watch. Well, notice now I can shove my whole hand in there. So I'll go ahead and take it up one notch uh, just on this right hand side for now. And uh, notice the front one here, I can shove my whole arm in. So I'm gonna take it up one notch. Well, Well, in the front here, I want to have it just where I can slide my hand in pretty easily. And it's going to depend on the rider, because riders, unfortunately, we don't have mains on a lot of our mules. And so we don't have anything to hold on to. So people grab the front of the saddle and back of the saddle and they roll it over. Get yourself something to stand on. And then when you, when you stand on that, you push your weight forward and then slide your leg over like this and climb in. So many people want to try to climb up like this. Don't do that. Use your weight going forward on the saddle, looking at the mule's head, turning the head a little bit, throw your leg over, slide it into the, your stirrup, and you're done. Okay, now, I'll move him around a little bit. And notice now, when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this breaching back. We'll readjust this breaching. Notice now, I can slide my hand in here pretty readily. Now, before I mount, I'm going to tighten it one more time. Where before, remember, I just got my fingers. Now I can slide my hand. And again, when we move the mule, the mule starts relaxing. So now I'll pull it up one more notch. Actually, I pulled it up two. And while he's standing there, we're gonna walk him off a step or two. And then that'll be good. Now what I'll do is I'll adjust the breaching. So I'll take my quarter straps like this and I'll try to have my buckle down this way and I'll pull my quarter straps on the right and the left. Now my hip plate right here, I want it to be between the dock of the tail and the point of the croup so that uh, I can make adjustments and it'll keep my breaching into place. So what I'll do is I'll take the Conway. Everybody hates these Conway buckles. Leave the Conway right here in that first hole. Don't change that. A lot of people pull it through. Don't do that. Now watch, look how quickly I can pull this up and adjust it. Pull it up like that and I can adjust. Just that quick. Where people make mistakes on these Conways is they try to pull all their slack here. Don't do that. Leave it in the first hole. Now that's my first basic adjustment. Point of the croup, dock of the tail. I want it to be kind of in the middle. So then we'll adjust the other one. Notice here, I'll push up on the strap. Boy, that's a good looking cowboy. Look at that, man. Looky there. Wave, yeehaw. Man, you look pretty good up there, cowboy. Now I'll pull the slack in that brand new truck saw helmet. So notice, I want to have I'm even on each side. Now, a breaching is not to hold the saddle back. It's not. It's to balance the saddle. What holds the saddle back is the back cinch. Here's the problem. If we over tighten this breaching so that we won't go forward, it'll end up rubbing hide off the, the, off the mule's uh, back. And we don't want to do that. A lot of people will take the side D-ring, the side strap right here, to get their horse saddle to fit. And they'll put the, the uh, strap right here to hold it back. Well, then we have it uneven back here. And again, we're wearing hide off. So I'm going to adjust this back here. This D-ring needs to go, the strap needs to go in this D-ring right here. That's where it needs to go. That way it keeps the saddle from moving right to left. It does not go in the rear D-ring. In order to balance your saddle, it goes on the side so if your saddle starts to go off the left, the right strap will catch it. If it starts to go off to the right, the left strap will catch it. Now I'll pull my slack here. And leave that go, okay? Now I'll pull, leave it. Now I'll pull the breaching up. Now, your breaching is going to adjust according to your terrain. That's imperative. You're getting ready to come off of a steep mountain. You want to adjust the breaching so that the mule has to set on it 
in order to hold it down. So you would adjust it clear down there in order to hold the saddle back. Now, I'll go ahead and pull up the slack on the quarter straps right here. I mean the hip straps. You want your hip plate to be at an angle like this so that it sets against the animal's rump. So we we'll come over here to this side and we'll adjust this one up. Now you had this britching on that big 16 and a half hands. Is, is, do you need to have a different size britching when you go this small? What's the sizing? The only thing it would be is not so much this uh, hip plate, it's our quarter straps because the mule is longer. It doesn't make any difference where this D-ring is. The main thing is what counts is right here where this hip strap goes against the animal's rump. Okay, so you'd use the quarter straps to be able to adjust that up. And what we're looking for, let me make my mule stand straight here, fairly straight. So with the mule standing fairly straight, I should be able to slide my hand in here, that's a half an inch, and then pull it away, and I should see an inch. But see, I've got more than that. So I need to adjust it. So I'm going to adjust my, my back straps right here. So your saddle can move an inch and a half, forward and back, left and right, no more than that. If it moves more than that, it's going to be up on top of the scapula. So now I'll adjust those two up. Now that puts my, my, my uh, hip straps in a little bit different place now. So now that I've got that set up, I'll take and count my holes. One, two, three, four, five. Come over to this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll take up one more hole here. There. Now, slide my hand in, that's a half an inch. I pull it away and it just starts to get tight and I can see about an inch. So that's roughly going to be about an inch and a half. That's what we're gonna be doing. So now, we'll go ahead and we'll put up the keepers. Very important to use the keepers. The reason I use keeper? keeper is this part of the of the buckle here. That's the keeper. That's what keeps the strap from getting undone. Because if you don't use the keeper, this can come up and, and it's unhooked right away. So I've got two there, one there. So two here, one there. We want to make sure it's even. Pull it up, put it in the keeper. Now, I'll show you what the breaching is supposed to do. The breaching is against the hip. The mule is standing still. When the saddle goes, when the mule's foot goes forward, the breaching comes away from the hip, then it comes back and touches the breaching. So basically what it's saying is, saddle stay an inch and a half back. That's what it's doing. So now let's watch right here. As we move the mule, See how it comes away, hits, comes away, hits, comes away, hits, comes away, hits. That's what you want it to do. You want it to do just enough to keep the saddle from going forward to that inch and a half. So again, we took the breaching off of the draft mule and we put it onto the Welsh pony mule. And notice we got an extra foot or so, maybe a little bit more than that here. So that's what we need to uh, consider is to have enough adjustment going to the different animals. There we go. So we got that in place, that in place, that in place. Now, we'll take the breast collar. It's the last thing that I'll do. And we'll take the breast collar. We'll unbuckle it. And then we'll pull it up. And we'll pull it into place. Now, notice my breast collar here. Notice this strap how it X's on both sides of the horn. And what this does now, as the mule walks laterally, the breast collar moves back and forth. So it doesn't pull the saddle forward until you're either dragging something or going up a hill. With mules very working very laterally, when you're attached into, notice I don't have D-rings on each side, when you're attached into D-rings or you have a pulling collar straps up here, Every time that shoulder hits that breast collar, it brings the saddle forward. So you got the way the mule is made that makes the saddle go forward. 
you got a breaching that says don't go forward and you got a rear cinch but yet you got a breast collar that pulls it forward that's you know that's kind of running against the way what you're trying to do is keep the saddle in one place now notice again i run my hand right here that's the scapula right there i'm an inch and a half away from the scapula to the front of the saddle from from right here in my uh my concho right here that's about your 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 major part so now we'll move the mule around a little bit The first thing I can see is the, the uh, back cinch and the front cinch are too far apart. So we need to move them closer together. The cinch back here is too far back toward the back. So we'll go ahead and we'll loosen up the cinches. So, will cinches move around like that when you're riding? You'll need to readjust them? Cinches will move around. They'll loosen up because the animal starts to shrink. They can lose as much as 100 pounds in one day's riding. So now what I'll do is I'll take this hobble strap right here, which for a short couple mule, you'd like to have it somewhere uh, in the uh, four inch range to six inches. I'm gonna go ahead and make him around four inches. Now normally, uh, you can use a, a string or you can use a piece of leather to tie them together, whatever, that'll be fine. I use nylon string a lot and I also send you, when you buy cinches, I send you a hobble strap with buckles. There we go. So now we'll, we'll, we'll rig that up, rig that together. I always do my back cinch first, my front cinch second, and that way it'll balance the saddle. So I'll pull it up kind of snug. See, I can just slide my fingers here. So I'll actually pull it to about the first hole right there. Now it's snug. What do you now, like about the angle now? Okay, now the angle is more straight up and down because when it's at an angle here and it comes back to here, the cinch usually loosens up and then the saddle wants to go forward. So you don't want your cinches back any farther than what I have right here. This is the sweet spot. That's what keeps the saddle in place. Your rear cinch on your mule and your donkey is your most important cinch. Helps keep that saddle into place. Don't depend on your breeching, but a good breeching and breast collar together help keep the saddle centered. A good breeching and breast collar together, as the cinches loosen up, the saddle will help stay balanced and into place. So, uh, let me go ahead and, and get my other cinch here. Pull that up. Again, I pull it right into the loop. Pull it right on around. Notice I'm not tying a bow tie. Only use the tongue of your cinch. That way you don't have a big knot underneath your leg. And it's a lot easier to keep the cinch into place when you do that. So now notice this one here, I got a little bit more room. Now what we'll do, put it in the keeper. I'll bring my breast collar up. Now my breast collar is very important that it ties on to the front D-ring. So here's what we do. The breast collar helps keep the front cinch here. The hobble strap helps keep the back cinch into place. And then my breeching helps keep the saddle from going side to side, the quarter straps here. And then the back straps right here help keep the saddle from going forward on the top end of the scapula. So all four of these straps together help balance the saddle so that as your cinches loosen up, helps balance the saddle. So now, notice on my breast collar, what I don't want it to do is be over here on the shoulder because every time it hits that shoulder, it's going to bring the saddle forward. So you see how too far away it is? We want it to be roughly about an inch and a half. So we'll take up the slack. Now we pull it away. We roughly have about an inch and a half there. So an inch and a half on the breaching, 
an inch and a half on the breast collar that should keep your saddle centered place. Again, notice I don't have billets on the right hand side over here. These are nylon latigos to help keep your cinches in the same place. Each cinch now is in its correct place. Notice how the front cinch is so much more of an angle. That's because the hourglass belly of the mule. With the hourglass belly of the mule, you over tighten that front cinch and it's gonna bring that saddle forward. Right now it's right. You put your hand underneath there, Dave, you can get a feel of that. So you can feel that scapula. So the edge of my, of my saddle is just about an inch or so back behind uh, that scapula, inch and a half. Now, here's what you wanna do. Slide your hand up underneath here and then turn the mule's head. Okay, slide your hand here. Okay, now turn the mule's head. How far do you have to turn it before he finally starts squeezing your hand? He's not wanting to. It won't do it. He won't go around, okay? So we have, I'll hold it here, and then I'll, I'll touch his head, and now I'll touch his head, and now I'll touch his head, and I'll touch his head, instead of pulling on it. Okay, but I want you to notice the main thing here. Just put your hand underneath here. Okay, now when I pick up on the head and I'll move it around, I'll move it around, I'll move it around, I'll move it around, I'll move it around. So you hardly feel any pressure. Just there. Yeah, that's right, right there. And that's to make your full turn. Okay, imagine if the horse saddle was setting up against there. You wouldn't get your fingers in. That's right. So practice what you want to, what you want to do is how is your saddle fitting? Slide your hand up underneath there and see how far you can turn the head before your hand starts getting pinched. And with the horse saddle, you'll find it gets pinched right away. That's why a lot of our mules don't want to make sharp turns in this sort of thing. Um, all right, so now let's look. My front cinch is real loose, so I'll take it up one notch here. My back cinch, I could just slide my hand underneath here so I'm gonna take it up one notch. And I'll pull the slack, like that. Now, I'll go ahead and move my mule. Just that little bit of movement is all that's necessary. Now watch, I can slide my hand in here pretty, pretty, it's snug, but it's there. And here I can just start to get my hand in there. You want to give that a feel, David? Yep, yep. See, it's just snug enough that you can slide your fingers underneath it. That's your beginning adjustment. Now it's going to be up to you, the rider, as to if you can get on with the saddle at that snugness. You don't want to over tighten that front cinch, though. Okay? So there we go. There's basically how we adjust the breeching and how we set the saddle from a 16 and a half mule down to a 13 two or so mule not much difference between the two you know when it comes down to adjusting it up this is kind of unique watch this dave when i back this mule up watch the saddle see how it comes down against it yep. now it comes away from it see it that's what, they, that's what the saddle does. As the saddle, it moves like this. That's the way the saddle goes down, down the trail. And like we showed on the video earlier, the back of the saddle cantilevers when you don't have the back cinch up. But see, as the saddle goes down the trail, it's doing this, because that's the way the mule is moving. And you can see that, did you see that right there, Dave? I made a good picture where you could see how that saddle's moving. And even now, we're still back behind that scapula. So, I'll move them around a little bit. Notice your breaching, how it comes away and then back on again. Goes away and, and on and away and on and away and on. You see that? Now, as the mule starts going down the trail, it'll change just a little bit more, but there we are. Folks, you, many of you have been here. You're coming down a steep incline with your truck. In the back, you've got a trailer. Now, you're not just touching the brake. You're putting a lot of pressure on that brake to keep the truck from going down the hill too fast. Going down the hill 
it's going to go faster. Same thing with this saddle. As the cinches loosen up, the saddle is going to want to go forward. So what we'll do, we're going down a steep hill. We loosen up one notch to start with. And then we loosen up one notch over here. And we lower our breaching. Do you see that? We lower that breaching. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and then the fourth one. One, two, three, four. So we lower our breaching now so that the mule has to sit on the breaching to hold it back. Now, when we adjusted our breaching, we was on flat ground. So we had adjust our breaching up to here because we're in flat ground. But when we go downhill, we want to loosen it up, drop it down so he has to sit on it. We're going to loosen our cinches front and rear. We're going to lift up. We're taking a break. We're getting ready to go down the hill. We're going to lift up the back of the saddle and we're going to lift up the, the, the pad and we're going to let cool air go through there. Like that. Adjust our breechings back. Our junch, adjust our cinches up. Finish taking a break. Once I'm done with my break, I lift up the back of the saddle. I shake it up and down a few times. I adjust it for my terrain. I buckle it and go from there. Now, let's pull it back and let's look. When I adjust it down, now, look, I got almost another inch. So I've got two and a half inches. So that means I have to adjust my quarter strap on right and left. And I have to take it up. On the right and left side. And I've lowered it. Now look, this is a half an inch, my hand, and I pulled away, I've got an inch. So I've got an inch and a half adjustment. Now, they, again, these measurements are only the beginning measurements. You may have to change it. You may have to drill a hole between the holes for your particular use on your mules. But that gives you at least the beginning measurement of how you would measure it up. And always, always use your keepers. So to, to finalize it, I'm going down a steep hill, lower the breaching. I'm just gonna go on little rolly heels. I'm gonna raise the breaching one hole. I'm going on flat ground, I'm gonna raise it another hole. So my flat ground's here, rolly heels here, steep mountains there. Notice I did not adjust the back straps at all. Notice I did not adjust the hips safe. Those two don't need to be adjusted. That's why I have buckles on here rather than Conways so I can make a quick adjustment. The saddle is not meant to be held back by the breaching. It's not its purpose. It's to help keep the, the saddle in, into place. These quarter straps here, that come from your center D-ring back, that keeps your saddle from moving right to left. These two straps here help keep the saddle from going forward. But notice that when this mule moves a little bit, notice where it's sitting against his animal's back right now. And then I measure it, move it back. Notice how it goes tight and then it moves away, tight and moves away, do you see that? Only thing that's doing is it's bumping the saddle and saying, stay here, stay here, stay here. You don't want it to be like this and held against him all the time because then you're gonna rub the hide off. You want the saddle to only bump the hip and as it bumps the hip, it says, right side stay here, left side stay here. And then of course, the most important one is your back cinch. With that back cinch being the tightest, that's where your saddle is gonna stay the best. Now notice, we saddled this mule about 15 minutes ago. And notice now I can slide my hand clear up underneath there. So the mule took the air out of his lungs in the past 15 minutes. Look how much looser your cinches are. That is why you don't want to tighten your cinches all at one time. So I'll go back, I'll pull it up one notch, I'll walk him around, pull up notch on the right and on the left, 
and then I'll readjust it before I climb back on it. And notice my cinches have elastic on them. And we'll, we'll see, we'll talk more about the cinches later on. What keeps the saddle from going back is two things. One, the front cinch, because it's at an angle. So that helps to keep the saddle back. Second thing is your breast collar. Notice my breast collar has a 28 inch strap that we cross on both sides of the mule's horn. So basically what I do is we'll pull this out and we pull it across, we pull it slope through, and then we cross it like this, come back through, and then we buckle it. We'll adjust it up just a little bit more tighter on this littler guy here. All right, there we go like that. Now, I'll go ahead and hook in my breast collar. We'll go around here to the other side. So that's how you put the strap on there. What I don't want to do is have the cinch, the uh, breast collar, bring the saddle forward. So. I'm gonna pull it through and then notice as the mule walks, the saddle is not being pulled forward. Again, you wanna keep the saddle in place. You've got a breaching trying to keep the saddle in place, rear sense trying to keep the saddle in place because the mule is V-shaped in your shoulders. So this right here keeps the saddle from moving. So now, we pull it away and we see almost four inches. Now I take and pull up my slack. Now I see we have basically a half an inch. Now we got about an inch. So that's an inch and a half. That's our beginning adjustments. It's what it is. So that's the what I do is because mules walk very laterally and we'll look at that a little later on. With a breast collar that's tied in hard and fast, it brings the saddle forward. So this is a pulling collar. And the great thing about it is pulling right off the pummel rather than off the skirting. And it helps keeps the breast collar up off the shoulders. Where if it's attached out here, then it's going to drop more down up on the shoulders. The downside is this is mules are very lateral when they're walking as they go. So as they're as their shoulder hits the breast collar, it's going to bring the saddle forward. You see how the saddle's coming forward? And I'm barely touching this, and now your saddle's almost dropped off of the rack. So that's why I prefer the type of breast collar that you see in this video, because the pulling collar on a mule brings the saddle forward. And again, the same thing. You should see an inch and a half from here to the chest. That's what you should see. Now, a good thing to test is put your pulling collar on, Take your mule for a little 15 minute walk. And at first you got an inch and a half. You come back in about 15 minutes, you're gonna see almost two and a half, three inches. That's what I'm saying. The breast collar, every time the shoulder hits it, it's gonna bring it forward. Now, we've got another breast collar. This breast collar, the downside is it doesn't stay up off the shoulder. It's great for a horse, but not for a mule. A mule, you want to have the Y shape uh, because of the way their chest is made. A horse is more rounder. They're more A shaped where, where a mule is V shaped. So this type of a breast collar will really quick uh, go down upon the shoulder and inhibit the shoulder point. Okay, look at the shoulder. All right, watch the shoulder move. Forward, back. Forward, back forward, back. Now watch. Watch the feet. Watch the feet move. Watch the front one move. Left front, right there. Right rear at the same time. Do you see that? So the back one comes up and hits the front one. That's lateral movement. So watch it again. You see that? Now let's come over here. Okay. Forward, forward, then the other one comes forward. That's the movement. 
So you can see right side, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side. You see that? You can see both these legs move on the left side, both the legs move on the right side. Now they do go left front, right rear, but that that's the horse side, it's not so prevalent, and but they do do it. The mule, the donkey side, moves right side, left side. That's why I like to have my breast collars attached the way I do so that it doesn't bring the saddle forward. We see on this semi-quarter horse bars, notice how this bar, when you push it forward, it goes into the scapula. Yeah. Do you see that? And then if we look back here in the back, see how it's sitting almost right down on the kidneys mm -hmm. in comparison. So you set a person down in there and it's going right into the kidney bars. And that's what I don't want. You know, we don't want this thing. You see how this tree almost fits the whole thing all the way across. The trouble is right here, this is where they get all the white spots and it's too tight. So you can see it going right into the scapula. Mm -hmm. And you take my, my tree, where's my tree? You take my tree and put up there in that same animal, look at the difference. You see? It doesn't go into the scapula. I have to almost tip it like this yeah. in, in order for it to do like the horse one. And notice back here, it's not sitting on the kidneys. Where that other saddle is sitting on the kidneys. Whoa, whoa. Where it's sitting on the kidneys. So where I really want to have a saddle sit is where it's going to fit is right where you sit. No pressure here. No pressure here. You can see how when I push this saddle forward, it goes right on top of the scapula. So you can see here, all right, this is really important here. So when this saddle goes forward, it goes up over top of the scapula. You see that? Mm -hmm. All right. So when I put the horse tree on there, notice that when it goes forward, it goes directly into the scapula. You see that? And notice how it's already laying back here, almost touching now. And as soon as you put a 200 pound person on that thing, boom, you're into it. So you're in trouble right off of that. So that's what people don't see on a, on a, on a horse saddle. They don't see the actual tree sitting on the animal's back. They look at it and say, oh, it looks like it fits. Well, two places you don't want pressure. And that's right in here behind the scapula. Now, so let's, let's step that mule back a step or two. Now, watch that area move. See it move? See it move? So, so you take and you restrict that area by putting the semi-quarter horsepower on there. And now when he moves, boom, see that? Mm -hmm. Moves away, now watch, watch it comes back, boom, you see? So, it, it, sure, it comes away, like right now where he's, st he's standing straight up and down. So ask him to go back a second. Okay. You see the side of the foot come back? When it comes back, it comes into the, the scapula. You see that? Now you take my tree and you put it up here. All right, now he moves back, doesn't touch that scapula. You see that? So there's the difference, that's the scapulas. And you think about a horse, even on a horse saddle, when, that's, when the horse's scapulas, they go like this, it's coming back and it's hitting that scapula. So what do we do? We tend to put the saddle up on top of the wither. Well, then it does this. So it's a lot different. So you have to set the saddle on a mule back behind the scapula. If I put it up here, look at the gap I'm gonna have. Mm -hmm. Which you don't wanna do. You set it up on a scapula. So people do that all the time. They put it up on the wither. And then they got, they got this thing banging. Every time it moves, it's gonna bang against the, the scapula against the tree, see? Watch this, boom. So if you set it back where it needs to be set, right here, when he goes back, you see it don't touch. And that's what's really important. There and then back here on the kidneys. Then when we look down through the middle, you look down through the tree itself, you look down through there, you can see it's not touching the spine anywhere at all, down through there. So you get some mules with a higher spine and some mules that's more rounder. The thing you wanna be thinking about is all mules. You make a saddle just for the one meal. Let's say you do it in, in uh, you build the tree in, in January when he's fat and rolling around. And then you, you put that same tree on him in July. It's amazing how that spine sticks up there and you're banging on the spine. So this is what I'm trying to do is have it come up off the spine right there. 
And, and the donkey bone structure is so prevalent on these things. So right there, that shows the, that shows the scapula. That was real good. Wasn't that awesome? I hope you guys loved it. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Be sure to go to muleranch.com. You can find all sorts of free information. That's the F-bomb we love. Free information about how to gain the trust of your animal and get the results you want when you go out there and train. You can find all of Steve's saddles mentioned in this video today. You can find all of the tack, all of the equipment. It's all there. Uh, there's lots of instruction videos. There's all sorts of material there um, that's both paid and free. And all of it is to make sure that you enjoy being a mule owner, a donkey owner, a mule rider, a donkey rider, that you enjoy the life of working with equine. If there's anything we can do, we want to help you. You can send a message to support at muleranch.com. That'll come to me, Dave, and I'll be sure to get back with you. Thank you again. God bless. Take care. We'll see you all.